Whether as professionals or as parents, adults who are concerned with the development of a child are continually looking for more effective ways to help them grow. But I think that in order for their help to be more meaningful, not only to the child but to themselves, they must feel comfortable with themselves, with less conflict between their own body language and verbal language, between their intellect and their emotions. These adults were exploring space, the space around themselves, which is really an extension of themselves, and the space in the room, which is really the beginning level of exploring each other. Their eyes were closed not only to lessen the feeling of self-consciousness, but also to remove visual stimuli so that they could really concentrate on the kinesthetic and tactile aspects of these experiences. of nonverbal communication between two people can be a new and often very powerful experience. Self-awareness can be heightened when the movement flow between the partners is mutual and spontaneous. Ideally, no one leads, no one follows. In an over-intellectualized society, adults rarely have a chance to really let go, to see where their bodies can take them. If these adults have reached a better understanding of themselves in relation to their own bodies, perhaps their words and actions can be more honestly reflective of what they really mean. Perhaps then there will be fewer difficulties in communicating with each other and with the children in their lives. five-year-old children already have confidence in their bodies. They can abandon themselves to the moment. By experiencing this kind of freedom and release, without fear, control and self-discipline now have real meaning. This is because they know what they're controlling, and thus are not afraid of letting go. Some of these children can even give up their control to their partner, as he pretends to be a sculptor, manipulating their body.
After working with children in varying degrees of mental illness, I have learned that body language can be the first means of successful communication. Sometimes it can also be the basis from which verbal communication can grow. But I have also learned that normal children, too, have very real problems in understanding themselves and in relating to others. If these children can become conscious of their bodies, it could mean that they are experiencing the first vital step toward a total integration of themselves. We cannot tell children what their needs are. We cannot tell them how to express themselves or how to listen. We can provide...